Hi, my name is Estelle. Welcome to another video. Over the past weeks, I've eagerly anticipated the arrival of spring by making some projects in its honor. Each transition of seasons sharpens my senses, fostering a deeper appreciation for the evolving environment. The cheerful melodies of bird songs, the warm touch of the sun, and the breeze carrying seeds aloft all serve as reminders of the boundless opportunities for growth and renewal. I set myself the goal of making a crochet project for this video. I've been having trouble with maintaining focus while crocheting lately. Crochet takes patience and a lot of time, and I've been finding it difficult to stop and get in that mindset, especially when I've been rushing all day. Slowing down isn't just about reducing the pace of our physical movements, it's also about quieting the chaos within. This week I had a few days off and alone at home, so I've decided to do little and make sure that what I do is relaxing. I also took a week of rest and didn't have any video last week, sorry for that. I aimed to create something that allowed me to pause my usual rhythm without requiring an excessive amount of work. So I thought a project with granny squares could be cute. I set my mind on making a happy, feel-good top, something Pippi Landstrom and Luna Lovegood would like. The chosen pattern was the daisy granny square but changing the colors to emulate a cherry blossom. I made a total of 16 granny squares and I have length the top using a pattern from my crochet teacher Liana. This is such a fun top for crochet beginners, and it doesn't need much yarn. I got one organic cotton yarn for each color, which weighted 200 grams each. In the end, I only spent a third of the yarn, or half in the case of the base color. Once I had all the grannies, I joined them with the hook and the cream yarn and all that was left to do was the strips and the blocking. This is my fourth crochet top I made, and I think it might be the best, especially because this cotton is very soft and light. So I recommend if you are going to spend so much time working on something, make sure it's very comfortable to wear. And this is the result! What do you think? I love it, but maybe I'll make some improvements, like shortening the straps so it's not so low cut, and maybe adding a fabric lining on the chest. As a naturally productive person, I have the advantage of being able to do a lot of work in a short time. However, this also means that when burnout strikes, its impact is very intense. But I've been learning to listen to my body before that happens. Engaging in crafting activities such as crocheting, painting or cooking provides me an escape from the daily life. As we immerse ourselves in a creative process, our minds gently detach from the bad things that happened at the office, 
allowing us to focus solely on the task at hand. The repetitive motions and concentration involved in crochet or sewing act as a form of meditation. Cooking also holds a special place in the realm of relaxation. Beyond its practicality, cooking serves as a serve of outlet where I can experiment with flavors, textures and presentation. But my favorite part about it is the act of preparing food for our loved ones. I find it hard to describe the feeling. Cooking is an act of love. It gives joy in the purest way. Lately, the concept of slowing down feels to me like an elusive luxury. I don't know how to pause when everything around me moves so fast. It makes me feel like I should be continually doing things, the more the better. Especially since I started working on this channel, but at the same time I keep my job. Don't get me wrong, I love having this channel. This is my creative space. It gives me a reason to keep creating and prioritize what I love. I began this journey with serious burnout from work and it has fitted my creativity like anything else. Still, this is only a small part of my life. I am in a constant tug of war between the demands of productivity and the need for pause. I get up every morning at 7.20 and I start my chaotic journey to the office with the street full of people in a hurry, the subway car filled to bursting, dodging fast bikes and scooters around every corner, and then work for some hours and make that trip again. What you see in this channel is my creative sanctuary, what I do in my free time. I wouldn't want you to compare your life with this fraction of life. The next spring activity was a long-awaited one for me and my friends as I had invited them home to paint candles and I promised to bake some strawberry rolls. Sometimes it feels like people around me and myself included are navigating life's speeds bumps as we can and forget to prioritize the things that truly matter to us, the relationships, experiences and pursuits that give flavor to life. By consciously choosing to slow down and be present, we can gradually reclaim control over our hectic schedules and create space for the things that nourish our souls. It's a journey worth embarking on, a journey towards greater presence, deeper connection and a more meaningful existence. For the last project, I wanted to make a pot holder or oven mitten. I also wanted to give it a spring cottage core touch. I had fabric scraps from other projects, and I also used a white cloth for the interior and batting for greater heat insulation. The first thing I did was to draw a hand pattern that would fit my hand and then cut the four pieces and the batting. I kilted the back of the hand before joining all the pieces. Once I had made the border on the small front parts, 
I was ready to pin the pieces facing each other, and so everything except the space to turn it out later. I didn't do a very good job on the pick, so I decided to add some details to cover it up and give it life. I added a beak, a crest, and acting as a tail, I made some strips to be able to hang it. And voila, it's ready for the next recipe. Anyway, I hope your spring started well and you got some inspiration out of this video. I send you a big hug. Adeu!